Good morning, fiancés. Fiance's. How are we on this fine Thursday morning? Uh, What's what's the We got to do weather. Uh, Current temperature is 61 with a high of 83. Mm. Uh, The low today is uh, 60. So we're already past that. Passed it. We're at 61 already. So uh, we did it. Look at us climbing the mountain. If you mix 60, miss 60, sorry for you. It's only going up from here. All right. You did it. Weather's done. Do you have any traffic? No. No. <laughs> Man. It's uh, uh it it is a nice um Thursday morning though. Like I've been not complaining, mm-hmm. but we did talk about the temperatures that we like. Right. And if I'm a person who's like a high of 85 seems like the highest we need to go. And that is as long as we have one heck of a breeze. Uh, it's been hotter than that. Let's, I'm not complaining. Uh, yeah, we cannot come on here sounding like uh, wine snobs like Rudo called us last week. We were merely discussing the weather and some of our preferences. That might have been the week before. But regardless, you know, I, I think you remember that. It stuck with me anyways. You know, It was completely forgettable for me. <laughs> Don't even know what you're talking about. No idea. <laughs> we got a text already. Hey, fiancés, tell me what it's all about. Oh, you were supposed to sing that. Oh, really? I mean, I wanted you to. Oh. Tell me what it's oh! all about. Okay. okay. I missed it. He's Sorry. a DJ. Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I feel really bad missing that. Okay. And good morning to you, fiancé. Oh, no highs above 85 in the next week. See, this is what I'm talking Now, that's breaking news. Yes, that is breaking news. Thank you. That is breaking Shut news. Shut the show down. Everyone head to the beach. Yep. Now we can Now we can do it. Yeah. No. I, oh, thank you. Now a we ret- can have fun in the sun. A return to, <laughs> to normal. Because, <laughs> bruh, this, this came out of nowhere. It went from, it literally went from jeans and a hoodie at the top of the week last week to shorts and a tank top halfway through it was just like what's happening here i would like to take one second to just say the uh pressure changes in the environment break my brain yeah yeah i am uh sending all the love and healing vibes to anybody else who had to experience the oh uh, plugging along just going along with your day and then all of a sudden why does it feel like my jaw is on fire right how come it feels like my eye might fall out Oh, it dropped 10 degrees and the clouds are rolling in and now there's a a storm? Boom. Wonderful. Migraine, Doing great over here. Migraine activated. Just charged up. Bruh. Mm. Yeah. Did one of those. No, no good. Blanca? No good. Is that that? Blanca. Blanca. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one that, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no good. Anyway. Another text. Good morning, hubster, wifester. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Our people are up and up. You're and up at and it. at it, and that makes me so happy. Yeah, man. I mean, so happy. That means they're here for all of this. I hope that you're not here to talk about election results because we are not going to talk about that today. <laughs> the results are still coming in. They're still coming in, so yeah. we're we're not going to chat about that. I am going to say, "Wow, did nobody vote?" And then we will just move forward. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to say too, ambush before we even get into the thick of it. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. It was when we were talking about Shamia Fagan. Shamia! <laughs> yes. Shamia! Many of our fiancés mm-hmm. were like, hey guys, Republicans would not resign. Do not. A false equivalence. I think if you roll back the tape, I too echoed that sentiment that, yeah. Republican would have just stuck this out. Like, what did I say? Uh, uh, oh no, that was that was George Santos, and I was like, I forgot what party were they were in. Yeah, mm-hmm. yes, and they weren't wrong. Yeah, at all. None of y'all were wrong when yeah. you said that Republicans would not 
uh, resign. There is something that I am having a big problem with, and that is keeping in mind that egos and lust for power know no party lines. Is anybody mad at Diane Feinstein like I am? <laughs> she is out here pulling an RBG. Yeah. Sabotage. And I'm simply just not seeing folks upset the way they need to be. Uh, there's not enough of her colleagues saying, come on, babe, we it's you, time. We need you to tap out. Uh, is it because she's a Democrat? This is not me going into like conspiracy or anything. This is my actual question. Yeah. Because this is sitting in that seat <laughs> still. If the idea is just like because I want a Democrat in it, we're that that has absolutely got to stop being a strategy. <laughs> yeah. no, like, do you think that right now, uh, Diane Feinstein, if she signed a legal document, that she would that it that it would hold? Right. Like, I don't think it would. She shouldn't and even be in charge her, of her own estate. She can't be in charge of her own estate. Yeah. Seeing her tell a reporter that she just has something wrong with her leg. And when a different reporter asks, what's wrong with your leg? For her to basically be like, that's my business. <laughs> that's not your <laughs> business. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. And then she just flatly lied and said she's been there. She's been voting. That woman's been gone for three months. And why aren't we concerned about that? Why isn't that an issue? Okay, one of our fiancés is all caps mad about it, too. <laughs> Good. Yes. Yes, we are mad. One, I don't know why I want people to be mad with me in this regard, in this moment. But this is, I mean, we can't, we can't let this stand. Especially when this puts us in a bad spot. Terrible spot. This does not make, it does not in any way bode well if we are seeing that in order to keep a seat, we will weekend at Bernie's it. <laughs> and we're already dealing with, you know, some of that in other positions in the government. I wonder what the defense is to that. What's the counter to that point? Is it that we shouldn't be, excuse me, we shouldn't be ageist or, you know, we should allow them to retire with dignity when they're ready. She should have retired with dignity 15 years ago. I want to know, and I mean this in all seriousness. We need an age cap. Why are we okay with retirement age supposedly being in your 60s? Except. Except for the most powerful positions. Keep it till you die. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? Yeah. She her current term isn't over until January 2025. Fam. Whoa. Fam. No. No, 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 no. Fam. They wild. What are we to do with that? She's not going to make it uh, and I don't mean alive. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean cognitively. She's not supposed to be working. What well, how old's Joe Biden? <sighs> I don't know why you would ask that. How old is Joe Byron? You're right. I should look it up myself while you were talking. I think Joe Byron is uh, late 70s. I think he's right on up there with uh, with my father. I was born in the late 70s. <laughs> it was a great time. Was it a good year? Yeah. Oh, my bad. Um, Joe Byron is 80. <laughs> <laughs> you were born in the 80s. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Wowzers. Okay. I mean, and the thing is, um, Diane Feinstein's older than that. Hold on. Die, young die, young oh, die. My, my word, bird. She is eighty nine years old. Okay, all right, we can switch subjects. I don't think we need to talk about this anymore. Diane Feinstein, you're supposed to be chilling at Cape Cod, okay? Hanging out with the grands, kicking it. You are sharing your cookie recipe. Supposed to be hanging out with the like, grants. chill out, bro. Chill out. You fought the good fight. <laughs> Her grands are adults, though. Yeah, oh, that's true. Uh, so, you know, great grands. I didn't want to assume, but you know, hey. Uh, 
Yeah. I'm like, just thinking about how doing? with it my grandma was at 89. Oh, you would not have known that Geneva Jones was anywhere close to 90. Right. You wouldn't have thought she was 90 when she was 96. Yeah, nah, Geneva's with it. She was witty as I don't know. The decline was so fast. Yeah. And that's, I think, at least visibly with Diane Feinstein, it's been fast. She yeah. went from, you know, being just not nearly as frail. Yeah. Right. And and I'm not this is not a judgment in any way. This is baby's not supposed to be working. No. Why aren't we okay with that? Yeah. I, I want to know why it's fine. Why we would even like in no other circumstance. No. Is the 89 year old in the powerful position? <laughs> and that's not ageism. Like this is there are eighty nine year olds that are with it. I right. still don't think they should be working. Right, 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 right. <laughs> like right. I, it is an indictment to me on any sort of economic structure if you are still working at ninety years old. Yeah, that's, I that's thought not you how it's supposed to be doing to go. all this hard work. You 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 know you earn your retirement. You're putting all the work early. You know you you do what needs to be done so that one day you can be ninety still working. No, no. No. Go to Turks and Caicos. I don't Bruh, know. Be yeah. on a cruise, my mom. Die fi. Go to Tulum. <laughs> Go to bed. Go but to Tulum. That's you rare. know what? Actually, please, because I would like to see Diane Feinstein doing all the Instagram tourist photos. That's what I'm saying. Put her on the big swing. Come on. <laughs> do some parasailing. What are you talking about? What, what you're not going to do is be out here talking about, I've been here, I, and you needed to, you should have known that. I've been here the whole time doing votes and stuff. Mm. Mm. Okay. Imagination station. Bruh. You have not been here. How old is Mitch McConnell? I'm sorry. 1,000. Quizzing you. Uh, I just, I mean, I, I think, you know. I think Diane is the oldest serving senator right now. There, uh, there are senators that don't know how the internet works. Oh, but absolutely. You got the talk tip? <laughs> is your TikToking? Like, get Mitch away. Is, Mitch is 81. Yeah, man, they're all like, no cap. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> no cap for any of us. Let us rock. Let us It's cook. crazy to me. Why don't you want to go hang out with the people that you spent your life with? Like, because, because then, they, then don't. they don't have anything to talk about. Well, that's true. They can't be having conversations about being powerful anymore. They got to be real people. But turtles live to be like 1,000 years old. He's so Mitch McConnell will away. never leave. He's going to outlive me. Period. Like, yeah, Mitch is going nowhere. Wow, this whole time that man's name is Addison? He looks like an Addison. Yeah. Addison Mitchell McConnell. <laughs> the third. Excuse me. Of course. Excuse me. I'm throwing Esquire back there somewhere. I don't know. Oh, he's probably, yeah. You know, he went to somebody's law school. Yeah. Anyway, what are we talking about today? What are, okay, so in... uh. <laughs> <laughs> but did you I feel like you, did you hit everything with the the Diane Feinstein I, did you, I feel like there were other things we were talking about but maybe I'm confusing stories I don't know I just feel like we had a really really spirited conversation about that point uh, when I was heading to the car yesterday I don't know okay well I was saying yesterday that it is overwhelmingly upsetting to me how quickly Democrats are willing to throw the ones that are helpful out and mm. keep the ones mm. who are just hindrances yeah. in their pocket. Like Al Franken, that was just like a, see you later, dude. We're going to have to get you out of here. We can't even Listen. pretend to, I, I'm not even going to investigate this. No. I'm just going to, hey, no, you got to go. We got to get this younger Bernie out. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. That's what that was about. Big time. And then here we are. With uh, eighty nine years, uh, you guys, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, but seriously, fiancés, who is the oldest person in your life, and what decisions are you trusting them to make? And I mean, oldest person, not like your oldest sibling, right? But I mean, is there somebody who's 90 in your life that you're like, no, they totally get to still make their own decisions. We don't help at all. 
listen, not only do they get to make their own decision, we want them to decide for the entire uh, family. I want them to be the most powerful person because they are the oldest. When you're still the matriarch. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When you, you're still there, so you, you're in charge. Yeah. Uh, we got a text that says, oh, my God, we were just saying Al Franken here in the home. Internal party, party politics uh, over democracy. Like, yo, why in the world? Why in the world would anybody yeah. want to still be upholding someone who says, yeah, no, I'm doing great. Just I didn't go to warmer. work for I didn't go to work for three months, but I was there the entire time. One, it's elder abuse. Two, absolutely elder is, abuse. You know, the, you're using these people as seat warmers. I get it. Uh, someone said <laughs> there's ageism and there's ableism, but there's also oligarchy, and I believe this is gerontocracy. Mm -hmm. I'm not pronouncing it wrong. Uh, if you can't show up to get the judges through, please, please, let someone else. Please, please, please. 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 I feel like I'm gonna be yelling today. Please. Uh, I'm gonna try and calm it down. Please. Someone else said, uh, uh, "I'm 68 and I'm ready for the AOC slash Hakeem Jeffries generation to take the wheel." Take the wheel. Somebody take the wheel. Jesus can't be there all the time. You can't put it on Jesus. Okay. Plus, I don't think he knows how to drive. I, I'm pretty sure there were not cars. <laughs> I just don't know why we ever said. We, take we the really got to stop asking. <laughs> Jesus of all people. It's like away. asking Diane Feinstein. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> they're the same it's age. true. <laughs> Not they're the same age. <sighs> Morgan Jones. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to bed. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. But you wouldn't want her to drive, is all I'm saying. Exactly. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. No, seriously. I listen, I had to go to Roseburg. <laughs> yeah, tell this story, man. And uh, my mom's mom, I, she was, she, uh, th you know, sometimes people just, uh, they get older, they start making some decisions that are questionable, right? And one of her decisions was getting a boyfriend who was stealing all her money. <laughs> and he. Oh, your grandma got a boyfriend that was stealing her money? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Yes. I mean Roseburg. I want. I want everyone. If, does anybody else know about Roseburg at all? Wow. You let me know. Uh, yeah. She. she I don't know where this man came from. He was absolutely just a scam artist, he like an older. Scam, yeah, he was just like a, a man that lives off of women, and he had a trailer, and he just oh, drove man. around the country finding people to pay for his life for a while, and he was like, "Hey, genie." Uh. <laughs> Anyway, uh, she bought a brand new, like, Osmobile something or the other. Oh, wow. And it was huge. Huge. My grandma at this point is, uh, has gone from being, you know, a very sturdy 5'9 mm -hmm. to a very frail, I don't know, 4'11. She right. just was right. gone. Right. Can barely see over the steering wheel. Like she is the at this point, you know, all of the comics of, yeah, of old, the the of LOL, grandma. the little old lady. Yeah, with the big glasses. With the, the yes, short curly hair. Yes, mm -hmm. that she is curling every day. Mm. Still, she's, of course, she's handling that scandal. Yeah. My mom and her sisters were concerned that she was driving. Number one, mm -hmm. she had also always had a Honda. This tiny little honda accord like my entire life mm -hmm. which was a very small car in comparison to the one that she purchased so it was like this was never going to be a good thing for you anyway right anyway they were concerned we all went down there for some reason and they were like morgan go with grandma tell us how she's driving if you don't think that she can drive we're gonna i don't know pull her keys i don't know what they right. what, the, what the situation was gonna be my grandma almost killed us twice Oh, my God. And nearly ran into her own gate that, you know. Has always been there. It's not that, a moving gate. It, well, so it moves to let you in and out. <laughs> wow. But she couldn't get to the button that you pushed because her car was too big and she was too little Grandma. and she couldn't get to the thing. It was a mess. She put us in a ditch. And I was like, Grandma, that's going to be enough. You slide on over. I'll go ahead and. <laughs> Grab it, that'll be, that'll that. be fine, baby. <laughs> oh, 
Here's the thing. She fought us on that, right? Because nobody wants their things taken away. And when people are getting older, nobody wants to hear that I don't have the capacity to do the things that I used to do. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But at some point you go, okay, you're right, actually. So when she's, oh, well, I don't think it was that bad. And I can say, Grandma, you drove us directly into a ditch. Yeah, <laughs> Grandma. Now, thankfully, we're all fine, and so is your car. Right. But you drove us into a ditch. And you live on a road where if you drove yourself into a ditch, yeah, it could be... Catastrophic. I mean, it could it could be a day or two yeah. before someone knows that you're there. Whew. So you can't just, you know, what if she hit... There's just wildlife out there. If she yeah. hit a deer, if a deer hit her. <laughs> deer scared. Just the appearance of a deer scared her into the ditch. Right. Like, yeah. So, like, I, we, if you're not allowed to drive, I just have an issue with the idea of you not just being at work, but in such a powerful position. If you can't drive yourself, why are you allowed to drive the country? You know what? Write it down. All right. Look at you. Yeah. Huh? Seemed ableist, but it, it worked for this particular. Oh, situation. you know what? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, we're talking about. Yeah. Like, yeah. cognitively, uh, because. Yeah, your faculties. And, yeah, that's what we're talking Yikes, about. Yikes, you put us right in the hot water there. Well, I'm you? just saying, don't clip it out and make me look like, you know. Yeah. That's not who I am. It's true. Yeah. I didn't mean to pause. No. I w- <laughs> know my heart. Okay. <laughs> All right. All so right. in local news, uh, turns out the Republican senators in Oregon are pulling a PPB by quiet quitting their jobs and blaming their actions on the Democrat boogeyman. Oh, <laughs> might just cost them their chances at reelection. Mm. Mm. Well, in national news, the spirit of Carolyn Bryant resurfaces and Sarah Jane Comrie, better known as City Bike Karen. I can't wait for that one. As the GOP becomes 4chan in real life. <laughs> It should come as a shock to absolutely no one. The white nationalist senator, Paul Gosar, hired a Paul Gosar 2.4 on his staff. I mean, I, for one, was not even a little bit shocked. Hmm. And lastly, America's mayor. Rudy, (laughs) it's 10 a.m. I'm two Viagras in. Hand me my scotch. Get the president on speakerphone and make my rotten banana disappear. (laughs) Giuliani. Has been accused of rape, sexual harassment, creating a hostile work environment, non-payment. Oh, and helping sell some Trump pardons. And uh, some of these accusations and allegations are recorded. We've definitely got some uh, receipts, as they say. Yeah. This go round. I'm ready. Play us a song. Man. Fiancés, tell us which uh, story you're most excited about. <laughs> I'm not sure where we're going to start yet, you know? But uh, the City Bike Karen got me up. Man, I was trigged. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited for this first story. Well, you know, I was going to say, this isn't really, you know, chastising any of our fiancés, but nobody did what I asked them to. And so... <laughs> You know, here we are again. They might not remember. We having to, to make decisions on all our on our own. And if you missed that entire beginning, I am Diane Feinstein. <laughs> Die Fi. Die Fi. Yeah. I need help right now. So we made the decision for you and we're going with snake on a plane. I mean bike. Snake on a bike. <laughs> A confrontation caught on camera in Manhattan where a hospital employee has come under fire for a dispute over a city bike with a group of young black men. The incident, which went viral after the video was posted online, has sparked criticism and raised concerns about the safety of the young men involved. The video, viewed nearly 40 million times since its posting on Saturday, Mm. Mm. shows a woman identified as a white hospital employee wearing scrubs, straddling a city bike and shouting for help. despite appearing to be unharmed. Mm -hmm. The young black man next to her asserts that the bike belongs to him as he rented it and requests that she moves. However, the woman refuses and accuses him of hurting her unborn child, despite no physical contact being visible in the video. Oh, man. Eventually, another individual in Scrubs intervenes and the woman begins 
sobbing. She later complain, uh, she later complies with the suggestion to choose another bike and the incident ends. The exact circumstances leading up to the confrontation are unclear as the video only captures a portion of the incident. Uh, the hospital worker involved has been identified as a physician's assistant employed by NYC Health and uh, hospitals and Bellevue. Uh, in response to the incident, NYC Health issued a statement expressing regret over the situation and confirming that they are reviewing the incident. They emphasize their commitment to providing quality care to all New Yorkers with dignity, cultural sensitivity, and mm-hmm. compassion. Mm-hmm. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump also released a statement denouncing the incident and the woman's actions, highlighting the attempt to portray the young black man as a threat and expressing concern over the safety of black men in similar situations in the past. While the woman in question did not respond to inquiries or requests for comment, a neighbor in her Brooklyn apartment building described her behavior as reminiscent of Central Park Karen, Mm. referring to a previous incident involving false accusations made against a black man. The neighbor expressed the belief that the young man in the video could have faced legal consequences if the situation had escalated. The NYPD has acknowledged the video but stated that no 911 call was made and no formal report has been filed. They encourage anyone who believes that they have been a victim of a crime to come forward. Sarah Jane Comrie is currently on leave and will remain remain on leave pending a formal review. I have conducted a formal review. Fire, 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 fire. So let me add just a a little detail to this in the way. And y'all let us know if you saw this video. Man. Um, The video opens. You see her and she is straddling the bike but it also looks like there's a struggle to straddle the bike like this was maybe a forced situation and by that i mean putting yourself on something you shouldn't be on (laughs) right right (laughs) so you've got the you got a person recording you've got the person saying i rented this this is this is mine right move it you have her saying stop help i mean i mean screaming help yeah, looking around, looking around, help. asking for help, pleading for help. Mm-hmm. Then mentioned something about you know you're hurting my unborn child. There's no uh, actual. They didn't. He didn't touch her, ma'am. It, it's also that screaming for help and let me take my badge off real quick. That part is because she did. She did have time for that. Mm. Had time to take her badge off because there was a moment that she was like, "Oh man, he's recording." Oh, this yeah, ain't looking good. Let me go. Let me grab this phone. She tried to grab the man's phone. Is that when she was like, no, but my own burn child. Yeah. Uh, and then so a white guy comes up who is uh, in same scrubs. Mm-hmm. And you see him in the background walk past and he's on the phone and he kind of looks back like, I wonder what's happening there. And yeah. he just keeps going. Yeah. And she's yelling for help at that point. Right. <laughs> when he comes back, he's like, hey, what's you know going on here? Give her the bike. And he's like, I rented this bike. She needs to get off the bike. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, just reset it. Just reset the bike. Let her have it. Dude, this isn't a woman in your life that you'd rather not listen to or deal with whatever the issue is. And you just. Just fix it for her. Just get 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 it out of my hair. Just just shut her up and just whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I didn't put gas in your car. Just, Just take mine. Just take mine. (laughs) <laughs> like what What? so when that suggestion is a no and she is fake sobbing there are no tears oh, yeah. there are no tears he has walked up and yes. she's like <laughs> that's when she activates it she's like i have an audience yep cut someone is here to Niagara help me Falls. yep but yeah. no tears fall oh, and gosh. here's the thing such a bad performance i know that you can be incredibly upset and uh, be emotional without tears falling. Sure. This was a full blown, non award winning performance. It was terrible. It was real bad. It, it was, was. It was below community theater. To be bad. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. No. Ready. Life came at me fast. <laughs> I was pretty meta. So she's. So she's. You know. She's crying, and. The guy who has rented it says, no, I I rented this. She needs to get a different bike. Right. To which the white guy says, hey, get a different bike. And when I tell you that Sarah just got off the bike, turned it off, 
pulled her phone out, started looking at it. She didn't even walk away. Like, it was the weirdest. Yeah. You don't feel threatened or scared or any of those things because you got off that bike and you stood there right. <laughs> on your phone like you were about to order a lift. He said, why don't you just, hey, this bike's available. Why don't you just get that bike? And she's like, huh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, I yeah, guess I, I can, will. I have to do that. What? And why Why did I invoke the name of Carolyn Bryant, you may ask? Because this is the kind of action that gets Black people killed. Period. White women have been able to weaponize their, not just their tears, but their words and their believability and fragility. The idea that, you know, they're so fragile that they need help. And I am not saying that that's true because mm -hmm. I do not believe that. Mm -hmm. What? But some folk are able to weaponize that idea. And here comes a, you know, white knight coming to save you. It gets people killed. <laughs> and the idea that you get off work and you're tired and you need a bike to get home mm -hmm. You don't get to take somebody else's and then pretend to be the victim of it. And there's there's something there if that's your idea of handling a situation. One of her neighbors said, I think the whole thing's being blown out of proportion. Yeah, because her neighbor is not thinking of anybody who has been killed nope. because a white woman lied. And y'all. She seemed she screamed help. Multiple times. And what I would like to on know. On a busy New York corner. And I don't, uh, real quick, yeah. I hope you don't forget it. I won't. Eric Adams is the mayor of New York, which means the stormtroopers are everywhere. I really appreciate that Star Wars ref. Thank you. You're they right. are. They're everywhere. They are. So the idea of them being like, oh, we never heard, of, you know, we're aware of the video, but nobody called us. Sure. But had there been the patrol dudes on the corner, you think that that would have went the same way? It's what, 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 what are we considering a crime here? Because if one of those young gentlemen had, you know, smacked her hand for right. grabbing her phone or, I don't know, oh, no, pushed for, her down. For her grabbing their his phone. phone. Yeah, yeah, grabbing his phone or pushed her down and that being caught on video. The police would not need someone to file a report. They True. would pursue that. True. So here it is. She is screaming for help at the top of her lungs. I would like to know. And these are the opportunities. I just want to sit down with her. I always want to sit down with these people. I know. I would like to know, at that moment, what was the result you were looking for? Were you looking for a good Samaritan citizen to assist you? Were you looking for the police? What was the help? that you were looking for in that moment? What what exactly did you need the help with? Ambush. Mm -hmm. What she wanted in that moment was her way. Mm -hmm. help, at, at, help with her way. At any cost. Yeah. And that's the is. point. There it is. doesn't matter if it means that that man dies. At least I got my bike and I got to Brooklyn. I mean, what do I have to do with that? I didn't have anything to do with that. That's the police. It's anybody's bike. That's it. Except it wasn't. It was rented. Could you do that to someone who had a rent a car? Could you just walk up to their car and be like, hey, man. I rented this, too, at the same time. Reset your car. I mean, people get into arguments like uh, over cabs, you know, like, oh, I hailed it. No, I hailed it. Mm -hmm. I hailed it. No, I hailed it. This is an app that you have to use with your money attached to it, with your an account, with your name, like verifiably. Not, you know, it, her bike in, in quotes. So I don't know. I don't have the. I, I'm not even sure of what the right word is. I don't I don't have that uh, trait in my <laughs> personality to walk up to a bike surrounded by people. Okay, also, I'm just going to take that one. I'll there. just take that one there. That you have your hand on. <laughs> and uh, let me be be clear. I've not rented a city bike in New York. I don't know if it's like uh, when you rent a scooter here and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, proximity and all of that. Like mm -hmm. it 
It's like a beacon. You hone in on it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if those are the same thing, but I know that she knew that that wasn't her bike. I'll I'll tell you this much. Yes, you're correct. She knew it wasn't her bike because she hadn't reserved it. This is how this works. Just the fact that she straddled a bike before reserving it shows the type of person that she is. And I was having this reoccurring theme in my head over and over again. Uh, Like the way people conduct themselves in spaces with a shared spaces, uh, shared services really tells me where they are on the meter of model citizen or piece of crack. And it's, at some point, I was like, am I am I being oversensitive about things? I go to our storage unit the other day, and there used to be two hand trucks in there. Now there's only one, because someone probably stashed one in their, in their unit. Mm. But then, that one, depending on whatever day or time it is, that's not even in the, the common area. It could be at the other end of the parking lot, outside. It could be wherever. So I pull in, and I see it outside, and I'm like, it takes... I don't know, 15 seconds to just put it back in a common area for everyone to use, Mm -hmm. right? I was at the supermarket. I watched how this person parked, and it was like, man, like, what type of of person are you? So with that whole city bike situation, I've seen people do that, too, with scooters. It'll be three or four friends. They see four or five scooters, and they walk up and just hop on the scooter. And when you touch it, it's going to ring off because you haven't reserved it. Or if someone else reserved it, you now cannot rent it. But for you to hop on it, it's like taking someone's sandwich and licking it and saying it's mine. Mm. No, you don't get to do that. That's (laughs) not how it works. It's literally not your bike. You walked up to a bike. You saw a crowd of people around a bunch of bikes. And you're like, I'm just going to go in here and get me a bike. Well, so I want to stop us from <laughs> from creating a scenario. We don't exactly know no, that part. you're right. We don't. We don't. We don't. We, we don't know we don't. if she just hopped on the bike. We don't know if she pushed her way onto the bike. We don't know what happened there. We do know she didn't reserve it. We know she so didn't So she definitely it. hopped on it before reserving it because there was no ability to reserve the bike. Yes. Yeah, I'm just like, bruh. The, the way you're moving right now, it's just you're so accustomed to having access to everything it's at a, all times. It's entitlement. That's the word. That there I it is. Earlier. I don't have there that it is. entitlement that would just make me go, that's mine. Uh, <laughs> it's. It looks like mine. I'm off work. Hence of course it's mine. mine. <laughs> it's time. It's time for me to go home. And you know what? I've had a hard one. That's got a kind of a, I don't know, it's got kind of a mind sheen to it. It does look like mine. Huh? It winked back at me, that bike. That's my bike. I just, you know, I can't get over how dangerous those kind of movements are. And so, you know, calling culturally people being called Karens or, uh, you know, this being Karen behavior it is all well and fine, you know. But I feel like it also helps to trivialize or at least makes people discount the importance or the danger of yeah. these actions. And like this one in particular, there are way, way, way too many examples of white women lying specifically about black men being either aggressive, sexually, phys- physically being uh, assaulting them in yeah. some way. Yeah. Which results in their death. Yeah. <laughs> Not in even their false imprisonment. Right, <laughs> right. Um, we have some of the absolute best listeners in oh, the well, we world. Knew that. In the world. That's why we're fiancés. This fiancé <laughs> texts us and says, if you want to play the conservative logic game around fetuses, she oh. did falsely accuse him of assault by saying he was harming her unborn child. Sounds like criming. <laughs> that is criming. That's criming. That's big criming. Sounds like criming to me. Whoa. That was nice. Nice. Uh, Follow up to that is police would have found a crime committed by her in that video if she wasn't white. Woo, woo, woo. Thanks for listening to <laughs> News with My Fiance. 
Why don't you guys just run this I'm show? DJ Ambush and Morgan Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I am X-Ray FM. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I mean, yeah. It's really that simple. I mean, I do want you guys to remember that when the, the bird watching, you know, uh, uh, that. that situation, there was talks of, like, people were like, he's committing a crime. He? <laughs> he, the guy standing? Being falsely accused? Being falsely on accused? video? As the woman is choking her dog out? Lying to the police? He's doing the criming? Bruh. I mean, bruh. This this is putting me in a lot of different like I I yeah. there's a lot of uh other stories that it's, I want this this just immediately trails into and so I'm trying to keep my It's mega triggering. I'm trying to small it's, it up. It's mega triggering. Um it's James Baldwin that says and I'm going to misquote so I'm going to paraphrase that being black in America uh you're in a constant state of anger. To be black in America black. and aware. Yes. Is a um, constant state of rage. Yeah, this is this is this is that. This is that. Um to help like illustrate that point, there are times when an antis- in in anticipation of going to a, a place, a destination that is predominantly white, I anticipate some type of interaction, microaggression. And then part of that anticipation leads to me living that out for a couple of seconds before I even get there because I'm so used to experiencing these aggressions. And then whether the aggression has happened or not, I am traumatized. Yeah. (laughs) Like this, this, this situation. So people went to the Instagram for, uh, NYC health hospitals, Bellevue, and they're in there. You know how it is. If something happens, they're going to go and they're going to comment on everything. And no matter, no matter what you post, yeah, they're doing that. And there were a ton of people that thought this woman's name was Carolyn Bryant. <laughs> oh, and seriously? Seriously thought her name was Carolyn <laughs> Bryant. And we're asking them, what about Carolyn Bryant? We don't care about this post. You need to answer for Carolyn Bryant. Yikes. What, is she still employed? And I was like, like, whoa. Carolyn Bryant. We don't have, don't one, of have one of those. one of those wonder what happened to her if anybody's listening right now and you're like but no who is carolyn bryant she is the woman who falsely accused emmett till of whistling at her to which he was brutally murdered brutally and she lived until what last month yeah she lived for um a very long time and at one point she was like i yeah i did lie about that i lied about that and nothing was done also, at the time, and I, I I learned this, I don't know, what, six months ago or something, but at the time, they had written an arrest warrant for her and did nothing with it. Right. And it was found in the basement of, you know, the jail one million years later, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Must be cool. Must be nice. However, I will say I do a lot of exaggerating time timelines and say a million <laughs> years later, but really, like, uh, how old is my dad? It's a lifetime ago. But it's not, mm. is my point. It mm. isn't that long ago. It's uh, still alive. So. Right. Like, Emmett Till, I believe, was um, like two years older than my dad. So mm-hmm. he would have been like 80. You know? Yeah. It's just. Not that long ago seems for like forever ago, but that's not that long ago. And when there are still people living who were involved in those situations or the people that were involved in those situations just passed away. Right. Like, understand how close that really was. And I mean, for real, just getting to live your life like that thing didn't happen. Right. Just getting to go on, have kids, have, you know, a, do whatever it is that you do. While a moment like that changes the shape of so many other people's lives. Changes the shape of the country. Yeah, this wasn't like a secret thing. This was a cultural touch point. And the fact that we were aware, were made aware that this was a false claim. And then there 
needed to be, I don't know, some call or um, some demand for justice to be served in order for something like a great injustice was committed. Someone was killed brutally, a child, because this woman lied. And then we found out that she, <laughs> she confessed to lying. And then it was just like, well, look, slaves are your, slavery's over, and you know, racism is in our past. We had a black <laughs> president, and here we go. We just keep it moving. I don't know why you guys always want to bring up race. Jeez, what's that all about? Apologies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Ooh. Welcome back to News with My Fiance with Morgan Jones and DJ Ambush. Rudo, good morning. Second. You have something to answer for. Have you bugged the studio? (laughs) And I need honesty here. Okay? We want full transparency. We want full transparency. Because as we go to that song, I say to Ambush, where's Rudo this morning? Wow. And you know what? Where's John? Crystal, where you be? Good morning, Crystal. And good morning, Malcolm. Good morning, Michelle. He told me I was going to be petty for saying that. (laughs) And then you know what happened? Rudo text us. Yeah. Rudo was like, so, ah, I'm not you know what? Games with you guys. You know what? I'm not falling for it. I will I I'm not gonna look for the bug because I think it's his business cards. His business cards are like Is there one in here? There's one in my pocket. Unbelievable. So now you're just being tracked at all times. Yeah. Rudo. <laughs> Rudio. I need you to come clean. <laughs> now is the time. This relationship doesn't work if we don't have trust. Okay? <sighs> hmm? Rudo says, happy Thursday, fiance fam. Out in the actual office today. Get it. Rudio. Good morning, Rudo. Something keeps happening and it's all staticky in my ear. Do you hear that? No, I do too. I think it's uh, Rudo's bug. Look at the headphones. Or maybe it's Rudy Giuliani. Oh, man. Rudy is accused of all of it. <laughs> I think every it. I mean. Is it a crime? Rudy did it. For, for, <laughs> <laughs> is it in the crime code? Rudy. Rudy, America's mayor? Yeah. It's like one of those uh, Facebook uh, <laughs> joints. Uh, calculate how many of the things on this list you've done. Oh, And yes. see what your score is. You get a dollar for everything. Yeah. yeah. You need a billion. Well, that is how he's so rich. Yeah. And he can pardon, you know, for a small fee. Uh, former New York City mayor and Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani is facing serious allegations in the lawsuit filed against him. Noel Dunphy, a former employee of Giuliani, is suing him for $10 million, accusing him of sexual assault, harassment, wage theft, and other misconduct. The complaint filed on Monday reveals disturbing details of the alleged incidents, some of which were recorded. I'm glad wage theft was mentioned. Yes. Because I'm I'm constantly being informed on what wage theft is and the the different ways that it appears. The levels of which it can happen. Yeah. And and you know, like it's it's really interesting because I've definitely been a victim of wage theft in my retail years and didn't know that was wage theft. For sure. You know you thought it was the way that management was treated in a job or I, I felt whatever. guilty. I felt guilty. Oh. It was like, hey, man, well, look, you didn't get that jump with, done within those hours. So off the clock, you got to finish that job. The way my brain just broke. Right. right. Finish the job off the clock out. Finish as an that. hourly employee. Yeah. Clock out. Finish I mean, not, that, not, not as if it's okay home. for or, a salary because we all do it salary. Yeah. We, that is uh, you're just expected to. Or if you're helping out on your break. Oh, man, the amount of helping out on a break you do, especially if you have to walk out uh, through customers to get out for your break. I used to have to do that um, at Nike and Mm. everyone's stopping you. It doesn't matter if you take your jacket off. It doesn't matter. You know, like it doesn't matter if you put a coat on. If people know you work there, they're going to say they're going to ask you something. Now, all of a sudden you're on your very short 10 minute break. Whoever said that a break should be 10 minutes. I just want to know. How about those days when you show up early and there's a delivery and it's like, hey, can you just 
Oh, can, just can just you just start it? Just could you just hop start in? it? Can you just hop in and help out? Ooh. I got half an hour before I'm supposed to clock in. Can I clock in now? No, no, just clock in your normal time. But can you just help out? Can you just help out? Can you just stop stealing my wages? Okay, we got to get back to I the know. story. Sorry, friends. Uh, I got triggered. Okay. Uh, Dunphy was hired by Giuliani in January 2019 as his director of business development. According to the lawsuit, Giuliani aggressively pursued her, offering a lucrative salary of $1 million per year and presenting it as a once-in-a-lifetime <laughs> opportunity. Dangling that carrot. Mm. However, Dunphy claims that the offers were a facade. Um, concealing Giuliani's true intentions to engage in a sexual relationship with her. Yikes. The abuse allegedly began almost immediately after she started working for him. The 70-page filing pro uh, provides a graphic account of multiple instances of sexual harassment and assault. Dunphy accuses Giuliani of forcing her to perform oral sex on him in his Upper East Side apartment, even while he took phone calls. She further alleges that Giuliani continuously pressured her into sex and made it clear that satisfying his sexual demands was a requirement of her job. The complaint states that Giuliani was unconcerned about obtaining her consent. Uh, Giuliani has not responded to requests for comment. However, his spokesperson told the Associated Press that the former mayor vehemently denies the allegations. Giuliani's communications advisor, Ted Goodman, stated, that Giuliani's lifetime of public service speaks for itself, and that he intends to pursue all available remedies and counterclaims. Hmm. Aside from the sexual allegations, the lawsuit also accuses Giuliani of ongoing, of, of going on alcohol-fueled rants that include sexist, racist, and anti-Semitic remarks, many of which were recorded. Furthermore, Dunphy claims that Giuliani entrusted her with sensitive information including correspondence between Giuliani and then-President Donald Trump, as well as communications with several Trump advisors. According to the lawsuit, Giuliani allegedly told Dunphy that he had immunity and could break the law. He even claimed to be <laughs> selling pardons for $2 million, with the proceeds to be split between him and Trump. The complaint also asserts that Giuliani repeatedly instructed Dunphy to not cooperate with the FBI, going as far as threatening agents who were looking to question her. The lawsuit filed in New York State Court names Giuliani, his companies, and 10 unidentified individuals in New York as defendants. He's also being sued by the man he accused of shoot shooting him with a boulder. <laughs> they really lied to the cops to get to get him arrested. I remember that. Yeah, do you remember yeah, the Yeah, there's a simultaneous suit happening. The good timing. Good timing. The way he 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 he, he the way he hit me, it felt like a shot. And it, it felt wasn't... like he shot me and hit me with a boulder yeah. at the same Sir? And if it wasn't for me being in such good health, I would have collapsed to the ground. You're pretty pretty good shape for 78 Ooh, you're a liar ambush some of the allegations that are listed out in this lawsuit mm -hmm. are graphic yeah number one real house of cards stuff here Ooh. How accurate are I mean these shows just continue to be like, Man. wow, so like so Rudy was just a writer on this show, yeah. huh? You, whoa. This is a documentary. Associate producer? What was he doing? Uh, I we very uh we talk about a lot how there are people who abuse power, there are people that become politicians simply for the power. They are not there for the people. They you know, just want to be able to do exactly this. Yeah. We are also talking about earlier how there is uh, a certain time in which people should just be retiring. Like, <laughs> why does Rudy Giuliani, why is he out here hiring a div director of business development? He's America's mayor. That's why. Sit down, sir. <laughs> What business are you developing? You are developing Pardon. zero business Pardon that sales. is... That isn't illegal. Everything <laughs> you're doing. Right. Why would you hire someone for the illegalities? You are hiring someone to write down your illegalities. Otherwise known as criming. You're criming, sir. You're doing the crimes. 
And then not only are you having that person write down the criming, you are then doing crime to that person. You know, when people are like, hey, those were the times. That's just how people were. <laughs> there is something about that particular age bracket mm. that uh, when you see these things pop up over and over again, you you are constantly reminded that these are men powerful or not but these are men that existed in the time that allowed them to be unapologetically predatory uh publicly Ooh, just like predatory it's just hey man boys will be boys a lady should know her place and uh, i mean well she should i mean hey you know what she, she's working late at the office what does she expect gonna happen you know like and wearing a skirt <laughs> come on but also they can't wear pants you sounded like a real conundrum. <laughs> so in his case, he found the solution for that, which was work around me naked or in a bikini. Yo. Even if we're working remote. Brosif got a pandemic happened and they couldn't be in the same place. And he was like, hey, we're going to do work sessions every day. Right. Via the Zoom. Yeah. I've got it on my laptop now. Right. And uh, why don't you go ahead and take your clothes off? Yeah, I'm going to need you to, you know, be professional and pretend we were in person. So be un Take uniform. your clothes off. What is that? Take your clothes off. The amount of abuses that this woman is alleging. So I'm just going to say uh, that sure. and then I'm going to sure. move forward with the amount of abuses that this woman uh, would have then gone through, dealt with. She describes him getting her drunk and uh, forcing himself on her. Yeah. Yeah. You can't tell me after getting hired that uh, sex is a requirement or sexual favors are a requirement of the position. What, what, what position is this? You said director of development, business development. And I'm getting one million a year. You right. have headhunted me. And and directors of business development are not, so this is not in the job description here. Right. This is one of the problems with vilifying sex work. Ooh. Rudy, you know what relationship you want. You know what you actually want. Ooh. Get a professional, pay that professional their fee. As opposed Ooh. to hiring someone under false pretenses and then having them do something that's completely outside of the uh, determined scope of work, or the communicated scope of work. Yeah, that, and you are now abusing somebody. Yeah. To your point, a consensual uh, situation where this is a business deal. Right. But ambush, that is part of what I think the misconception of any, um, you know, sexual assault, R word, mm -hmm. people think it's about, or many people think it's about actual sex. Right. And it is about actual power. Boom. And if you are paying someone who knows that they are going to do these things. Then who has the power? Then what power? What am I, what am I asserting in this? You know, how do I get to feel like the, the one? Yeah. No, it's got to be, you know, I hired you. I don't pay you. So I'm already subjugating and exploiting you. And now I'm going to do this part. He's he's being accused of being. <laughs> I, almost <laughs> said, I almost said America's mayor. Yo, I, would, <laughs> I had to pull my I had to reel it in. So I was like, I, you're about to be real incendiary. Chill he's out. He's being accused of being America's mayor. He's a, he, but he is. Yeah. I mean, nothing in these charges is like, oh, no, not America's mayor. It's like, oh, oh America's mayor. Here's here's something. How I keep asking you how old people are. I keep doing this over and over again. On it. So this is how he's conducting himself at this stage in his life. Big age. At his big age. It's a real big age. What oh, I was right. He's 78. I'm sorry. Right. What do you think he was doing as America's mayor? Oh, when exactly. He this. had all of the power of New York. Like, 
NYC. Oh, no, but stop. Stop. Okay. Stop. Because not only did he have a different level of power, but yeah. I need you to understand that at this point, at 78-year-old Rudy, as opposed to, I don't know how old he was, 45? I, right. I have no idea right. how old he was. As Vampires age are different. They completely do. Yeah. And there's never been a time that Rudy Giuliani looked young. No. Not once. No. Not in my lifetime. Mm-mm. Just kidding. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I forgot my point. No. You have a certain level of power, yeah. a, a, a amount of power when yeah. you are the mayor of especially a city like New, New York. York. There is no other city like New York. But when you now have the ear to one of the most powerful, dangerous men who believes what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing. Right, because you can just grab him by the... That power's different. Yeah. Yeah. Rudy said, I have immunity. I can do criming. Yeah. And yeah. And he meant all of them. He didn't mean like the one he was talking about that day. He means I'm never going to jail. I'm America's mayor. Right. I give out pardons. I give out pardons. I'm out here selling pardons right now. You have somebody who need one? He literally said that to he her. He literally said, you know hey, someone, you know someone needs a pardon? Let him know. I got him. Which is one. the wildest thing in the world to me that you even think that we have the same network of people where I'm, I got friends that need pardons. What makes you think? Didn't you hire me? Who do you think one of my friends are? DB Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think I'm kicking it with? Well, to be fair, she is kicking it with him. So he thought. Oh. Maybe we are, in fact, in the same circles. But imagine, imagine your boss says to you, you know anybody who needs a pardon? I'm selling them for two milli. I get a piece. Trump get a piece. You're not going to get a piece, but like, tell me. Right, right. Not even you you get commission. Now, you ain't even getting the bends out of this one. How? But you got anybody? Send them my way. I'm like, uh, yes, Loki Odinson. Okay. He needs a... And I'll have his people get in contact with you. I would have I would have played that out. He did need a pardon. Yeah. Like, bruh. This is the kind of thing that I can't get. I just, I, what I can't do. Do you think he waited until he was the president's lawyer before he was this corrupt, guys? What things were for sale when he was mayor? All of it. <laughs> What, what, including his tie, what city bids and contracts were for sale? When All of was, them, yeah, every single one. This is like they you don't start reminding us he's America's mayor. You don't, you don't at 78 start backroom deals, <laughs> start criming. You don't, you don't start <laughs> late stage criming. Like, <laughs> the only reason. Oh. To my to to my real understanding, the only reason that Rudy gets the America's mayor, mayor title is because nine eleven happened while he happened to be mayor. Period. That's it. He wasn't over there making the city better. No, no. He was still a he was still a Gotham villain. Yeah. Even then, and he just got worse. Yeah. Because when you are able to be so corrupt and just say that other people are corrupt. And then that gets them off your scent for a while. I don't know. Like, you don't stop being corrupt. You keep going. And you maybe dabble in a couple other things now. A little that will do you. You know, like, th- there's no way. <laughs> right. That Rudy was out here being a great a great man. Right. And then all of a sudden. He developed these habits later in life. Yeah, you don't get to call uh, being he he was saying he told the uh or it's alleged that he told Noel that he was intensely attracted oh this was this was wild to a 20 year old in uh, i don't know their vicinity i don't remember w- what what like that person's intern. role maybe yeah. okay intern and uh just you know could barely control himself it just it's different you know i just i i am unable to control myself around this person. Rudy Giuliani, again, America's mayor, again, the former president's lawyer, is on video 
thinking he's in a hotel room with a 15 year old, 14, 15 year old, putting his hands down his pants and lying and saying he's tucking his shirt. We already, we, we, we seen you. Right. And that was on accident. Like that was, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen doing, a doing the Borat prankings and not in any way thinking that Rudy Giuliani would A, go into the room with her mm-hmm. and B, think about even putting his hands in his pants. There is a part of me that's like, why did you cut that short? All we needed was three more minutes. You cut it short for the woman's well-being. Oh, uh, true. She would. She didn't you, sign up for a sting operation. It, You're right. No, she did, but not not a real that sting far. Operation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. She's exactly. not law enforcement. She didn't really sign up for a sting operation. Right. Yeah. yeah she's yeah, an actress. That's true. She's an actress. Yeah. She. You. No. You gotta. You gotta protect her. Make sure that she doesn't actually get sexually assaulted by America's mayor. Going back to that twenty year old, he went as far as to say, again, alleged, but I believe this is recorded too, that he did kiss her but didn't get the opportunity to consummate the relationship. Yes. What relationship? She's an intern. Old enough to be your granddaughter. Like she's a, I can't. It's a multi-layered cake of gross. It's just what, what, You know what's ruined me, too, is do you guys remember that? um, I don't remember what the press conference was, but uh, Rudy's hair dye was just (laughs) dripping down his face. Oh, that same press conference where he blew his nose and wiped his face with it? Is that the same one? I don't know if that's the same one, but it's uh, all around the same time. Those are two things that I cannot not think about when it's, it's, it's who I see talking is the... Giuliani with the hair dye running down his cheeks. I can't get over it. No. No. I can't imagine working for that person. Uh-uh. I can't imagine. Uh, but Noelle was able to get a lot of things. She's got text messages. She's got uh, emails. She has recordings. This does not look good. At all. At all. It really doesn't. Somehow, you know, it'll continue to divide the country. And uh, someone... We'll be able to come up with a talking point why it's completely fine that women get sexually assaulted at work and don't get paid for their <laughs> for their work, and that it's fine that Rudy Giuliani was selling pardons, right? Because you know Trump's a businessman. I mean, <laughs> here's the thing: was she even qualified for that position? I feel like she knew what she was signing. You know, I do wonder. Because... She, you know, and I'm sure he was super upfront about it, how, yeah. What this job entitles is sexual is, you know, favors. Giving her an opportunity. Because then that wouldn't be a sexual favor. It would be part of the job description. That's mm. good. Yeah. Y'all. Okay, ambush. I think we jump into the Oregon Senator story. Boom, boom, boom. Fiance's, I'm sorry. We did, we did a lot today. We, I, listen. We talked, we, we talked a lot longer on the things that <laughs> I think we weren't supposed to. My bad. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. Uh, I don't think we left anything on the table. I mean, honestly, oh, no. we could have we went longer on both of those subjects. Definitely. It's a lot. Definitely. Guys, we are bouncing. I'm not going to take too much time. We're bouncing around the idea of expanding this program. Oh, you're going to do this right now? Just no. I'm just saying. You, you keep know. doing production meetings. <laughs> on the air. On the air. Yeah. But we do love feedback, so well, I mean, it's not a bad feedback. Would you guys tune in for a three-hour situation? Not that we would take up three hours of X-rays time, but you know, maybe an hour here and two hours somewhere else. We just there's just so much. There's news. too much news. There's so much, and we're we're really, we're getting into a really good pattern of getting the stories in a little bit earlier in the week. But then we like just last night, it was like what? This is what happens. Yeah, we, so if, news, if you are able to get the news done, choose the stories and write the news before Wednesday at midnight. Right. Seven news stories come out between Tuesday and a uh, Tuesday night and Thursday yeah. morning. Yeah. We already have two more stories for next week that are going to get archived. It's, I mean, oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. It, it's just, there's too, there's too, too much, much news. Much. And it's also, we are very long winded. Yeah. I'll be really quick with the, the, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Because I think it's important to talk about the Oregon senators that are out here fighting for their right to find a new job. 
<laughs> it's such a hard market to stay employed. And this is what they're doing. Republican lawmakers have once again resorted to boycotting their own legislature as a disruptive tactic. This strategy, used in recent years, involves senators fleeing the state capitol to avoid casting votes, effectively stalling legislative business that requires the presence of two-thirds of lawmakers. This tactic has been so disruptive that voters amended the Constitution last year to punish repeat absentees by barring them from re-election. However, as the legislature debates contentious bills on abortion and transgender rights, some lawmakers are boy- boycotting once again. Once again. This week, three state senators reached the legal threshold of 10 unexcused absences. That's a lot anyway. Yeah. I feel like you get kicked out of school for that. Okay. You, you don't have a you don't have a retail job after that. Oh, you one call no show. 10? No. Uh 10 unexcused absences marking the first significant test of the law. Tim, I don't ever know this. Nop, nope. Nop. Yep. Nop. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Republican state minority leader stated, quote, let it be abundantly clear. This is just the beginning of the fight. Republicans have hinted at the challenging, oh, I'm sorry, at challenging the new constitutional provision in court. The three lawmakers who have reached the 10-day mark are Dennis Lithencombe, mm-hmm. Daniel Bonham, both Republicans, and Brian Boquist, a former Republican who is now an independent. Betsy Jar. <laughs> While there are no term limits in the legislature, some senators are facing re-election campaigns as early as next year. Mr. Knopp has been called for a bipartisan, or called for a more bipartisan approach to address the concerns of Republicans who strongly oppose bills and would expand access to abortion. Oh, that would expand access to abortion and mandate insurance coverage for gender transitioning treatment when deemed medically necessary by healthcare providers. I have so much to say right now. I'm I'm literally you're steamy. yeah bursting at the seams yeah. right now. Just yeah. The continued walkout could have far-reaching consequences, potentially impacting bills related to transportation, education, and homelessness. However, before that, the question remains whether the absenteeism law will motivate enough lawmakers to return to the Capitol. How many will be willing to risk their political futures? Mm. Senator Kate Lieber, the Democratic state majority leader, uh, emphasized the quote, walking out on our democracy is not an option, referring to the voter approved ban on legislative absenteeism. Currently, committee hearings are proceedings are proceeding as only half the lawmakers on a panel are needed to establish a quorum during those proceedings. In previous years, Republicans employed walkouts to delay bills on taxes, climate legislation, and abortion. Attempts by former Democratic Governor Kate Brown to bring back boycotting lawmakers were unsuccessful until Democratic leaders declared a cap-and-trade climate proposal, which the boycotting lawmakers opposed, dead for the year. Mm. Governor Tina Kotek, also a Democrat, has ruled, ruled out a strategy of compelling lawmakers to return to work. Right. With Democrats dominating the population centers in the West and Republicans finding support in the rural areas of the South and East, some Republicans have contemplated a more permanent separation. Uh Uh-oh, where's Ruta? By proposing to absorb the eastern part of the state into Idaho. Although Republicans controlled both legislative chambers at the start of the century, the rising progressive influence of cities like Portland and Eugene have shifted the political landscape. Last year, over two-thirds of voters approved the ban on legislative absenteeism. Democrats remain hopeful that lawmakers will return to their duties in the coming days. Some Republican lawmakers have yet to reach the 10-day mark and could return to the Capitol before doing so. The legislature is required to approve a new state budget by the end of June. Wow. While a potential Republican lawsuit would not be resolved in time for the current session, it could provide clarity for next year's session and determine who will be eligible for re-election. I have a very simple uh, response to that. If you do not want to participate, resign. Go away. If your strategy uh, lacks the ability to actually argue your point, Mm. and garner the votes necessary Mm. to get your will, then what you're doing is unpopular and not the will of the people. Move on to the next issue. But just saying, I'm going to take my ball and I'm going to go home 
and you guys figure out how to continue this game without me or not. Well, also, I'm not just gonna go home. I'm gonna be out of here because I got I you can't I can't have the news come into my home. So I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave the state. That really blew my mind last time. Like that was the first time. Oh, I it was been... like, hey, Dallas. <laughs> like, wait, what are they doing? <laughs> Anybody ready for Tulum? Go ahead. And... <laughs> Die fi. <laughs> Die fi. You ready? Meet you in Tulum. Like this is bad, bad, and a <laughs> joke. Like it's an absolute joke that any of these people still have jobs. You're not serious. And we talk about this all the time, yeah. where it's like the the most powerful positions you are able to do but the absolute worst yeah. and just get to hang out and yeah. keep doing it. Shout out to us for, uh, and by us, I mean the citizenry, uh, yeah. Oregonians, yeah. for voting for them to be held accountable in some way, because otherwise you're not going to do it, right? And so shout out to us for saying if you miss if you have 10 unexcused absences you are unable to I mean, run again i mean look at that low bar shout out to us for saying you have Do to show job. up to work to work yeah man i'm How giving the shout out because yeah. i think that there's too many instances where there is zero consequence and we're yeah. and we're sitting here talking asking where the consequences for these actions are and at, at, all I'm saying is there is a consequence. No, you're right. And I do want to say, though, it isn't a big enough one, right? Because if my, if my job, if I know that my job is to obstruct, I'm doing my job. Yeah. And I also know, yeah, I might not be able to do this again next year, but we just we just get another person who's going to obstruct. But you get to finish the year out. That's the other thing. Like, That's yeah. the other thing. Like, it should be after 10 of these, you're done. If you no called, things, no showed, more than, uh, there's no way you would get 10 times at right. any establishment. Right, right. No one's doing that. No, no way. Doing that, unless your uncle runs the place. Even then, I feel like that's when the uncle is like, I've had it, Trevor. Look. You know what you made us do? People are looking at me funny. Because I keep letting you show up late or not show up. This has got to be different. Okay, yeah. anyway. Yeah, uh... <laughs> Ambush, we have so many missed texts. Do we? They came a rolling in. We have production b notes. People want things from us. Whoa, they did come in all crazy. Uh, I'm just, I don't think we have time to read all of them, but I'm I'm going to do I, as many I, as I can. I, I do it. Uh, good morning, fiancés. Thanks for the show as always. Production note. One, uh, I'm sorry. I need two things from you. One, I need music notes. If you could add a track list in the notes, Please. Ooh. Two, I, all caps, need a t-shirt with Ambush's closing tagline, the whole thing. Pretty, <laughs> pretty please. Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. Both. That is awesome. The answers to both of your questions. Yes. Yes. For, for, I'm sorry. Uh, John says, yes, I would turn it. I would tune in for a three hour show. Was that John who also said those are the things? Yes. Both of those are from John. Uh, uh oh, uh, more days. No, John said oh, the T-shirt, the T-shirt, and okay. the music notes, okay. and then also said that he would tune in for a three-hour show. Nice. Uh, next one, yeah. Ooh, more days. I'd follow y'all. Nice. You know. Yes, please. More fiancés, longer <laughs> shows or additional shorter shorter shows. I'll take as much Morgan and Ambush as I can find. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'm doing the uh, making a heart with my hand, but you can't see me because I'm on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another one. I can listen to I can listen to stuff all day long at work. Give us more. Always love second hour of unrefined. Whoa. What? Nice. Nice. I love when we get those crossovers. I love when we get the unrefined crossovers, bro. <laughs> if you guys can see Morgan's face right now. That totally caught her off guard. <laughs> <laughs> You guys make Thursdays, bro. Oh, my God. It was like I got in trouble. I mean, <laughs> She's I mean, like, that second hour, wowie, wow, wow. Uh, <laughs> For anyone that is unfamiliar with the Unrefined Sophisticates, it's <laughs> the show with Morgan Jones and Ken Jones, uh, one of my doppelgangers. Um, it's an amazing show. It's an amazing show wow. that started out with like a three-hour-plus format. Don't ever listen to any Online. Of and then... The privilege of being on X-Ray and the numbers 
So, you know, with being online, I mean, being online, you can do whatever you want. FCC doesn't even matter. Once you hit the radio, though, they got that first hour that is the sophisticated hour. Uh, and that second hour is the unrefined hour. And for someone to mention specifically, specifically that second hour, when things go off the rails. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Thank you so, so much. Oh someone my God, else said, John said, I love my I gotta go. Thank you. For <laughs> She's over here blushing, for guys. This, Tom is, this, this, is, <laughs> this was news with my fiance. Brought to you by Morgan Jones and DJ Ambush. Uh, podcast editor Kyle G. Uh, Kyle, we will start putting the music notes in these episodes. Uh, we'll put we'll put them in the doc. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you guys so much, man. We really, really, really love this this, this engagement. And the show, and you guys. Seriously. You fiancés are incredible. Seriously. Don't let the individuals distract you from the systems. Poverty is a policy choice. People over profits. Power to the people. None of us are free until we're all free. Thank you so much for listening. And bye. Bye.